What is up, Packer fans? Back again. I am so excited. Packers have arrived in London. Rodgers has already started his first press conference. I have that posted um, on my channel already, so go check that out. Everybody is super excited to be in London. The players, the staff, even obviously all the Packers fans in London, they're going crazy. A lot of people from the States went to London to see the Packers play, and obviously a lot of people in Europe, all over Europe, are getting a chance to see the Packers play. Rodgers even said it himself. The reason why the Packers have not gone over here in, you know, I think it's eight-year history of going to London is the Packers, you know, they're too much too much fandom here. No one wants them to leave. No one wants to lose a home game. So the fact that there's an extra game this year, extra home game, allow the Packers to go to London, and they are super excited. It is such an experience for a lot of these guys. Like Kenny Clark has not ever even got a chance to leave the country. You know, you figure you're making all those millions, you might get a chance to go somewhere. But a lot of these guys are taking care of other business and don't get an opportunity. So this is a huge chance for a lot of these guys to see some other cultures and parts of the world. And that's super exciting for anybody, really. So tomorrow or on Sunday, the Packers start at... It'll be 2.30 p.m. in London, which push, push, uh, pushes it back to about 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time in New York, which makes it 8.30 here in Wisconsin where I am, and then like 7.30 Mountain Time and 6.30 a.m. on the West Coast for all my California family. They get to watch it at 6.30 a.m. Pretty cool to have football on that early. They usually get it at, I think, like 10.30 or 10. We're used to it, noon, but... 6.30 is quite early. 8.30 is exciting, and it's the Packers, so super exciting. I will be doing a live. You guys tune in for that. But it's exciting having the Giants come to London to play the Packers. The Giants have already been to London twice, and they're 2-0 and in London. So hopefully the Packers can put an end to that London win streak for the Giants. The interesting part of this game is the Giants and the Packers are the only two teams with winning records to ever play in London. And they're the only two teams with winning records to play this weekend, which is also an interesting little fact. So definitely both teams have a lot at stake, a lot at stake and both teams want to get out of there with a win and healthy, of course. Knock on wood for that. Giants do lead the league in rushing, and that is something that we're going to have to watch closely. Obviously, the two-headed monster of Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. Jones is healthy. He is back. He practiced full go yesterday. He's good to go for the game on Sunday. I think he might be a little hampered by that ankle, but he's still going to be out there. He's still going to try to give it a shot. They're going to numb it up and do all those things. So, you know, aside from a, a, another injury to that ankle, Tyrod Taylor is out, and that means that Davis Webb, yes, so <laughs> would come in if, um, if, Daniel Jones does get hurt. So something to watch, obviously. Daniel Jones and Saquon are lead that rushing attack that has them in first in the league in rushing. But Saquon does have 462 yards himself, and he himself is leading the league in rushing. So that has a lot to do with it. Daniel Jones does play a big role in that. He does have games where he can get up over 100 yards on the ground. But this Packers-Giants series dates back to 1928. The Packers lead the series 36-26-2. to to two. They had two ties. A lot of these matchups happened, you know, way back in the day before the Super Bowl era because there wasn't a whole lot of teams. So these teams, Packers-Giants, played a lot back then. And then over the years, because of the divisions and everything, they played each other a lot less. Mm -hmm. And that's why they don't have, you know, nearly as many matchups as the Packers and Bears do or other teams in the division. But... Aaron Rodgers is 4-1 against the Giants in the regular season. He did win in 2019 in New York City in a snowy blizzard game, 31-13. They have won their last three against the Giants. And so going into this one with both teams 3-1, and one, both teams, you know, kind of riding a, a win last week, kind of a big win. Both teams are looking for another victory this weekend. So, But Aaron Rodgers, like I said, he's 4-1 against the Giants all-time in the regular season. 15 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. And we all know what happened at the end of the Super Bowl. We won the Super Bowl in 2011 after the 2010 season. Then the 2011 season going into 2012 Super Bowl, we went 15-1. The Packers had a dominant season. Rodgers played his head off. I think that was his 
one of his first MVPs, I think it was 11-14, and then the last two seasons. So that was a crazy season for the Packers, 15-1. and one. They go in, number one seed, Giants come into Lambeau, divisional round of the playoffs, and Hakeem Hicks had seven catches for 165 yards and two touchdowns, and the Giants beat the Packers at Lambeau, and, you know, that was 2012, so almost 10 years ago now, it was the 2011 season, 2012 playoffs, 2012 Super Bowl, but we all know Packers lost that season, such a bummer, um, that was, like I said, 10 years ago, so everything is different, Rodgers is probably the only guy from that team that is still playing um, on, on the Packers, you know, there might be some coaches and stuff from the past, but he's the only guy that remembers that game, so Obviously, everything is different. All totally new players. They had Eli back then and all that. So, But anyway, so the Giants coming into this game, they are dealing with some injuries. Cornerback Flott, he's out. Wide receiver Gallaudet, he might be out. D-lineman Mando, Mando, he might be out. Outside linebacker Ojulari, he might be out. Wide receiver Wandale Robinson, he might be out. Tyrod Taylor, he is out. And Kadarius Toney, he might be out. They're all dealing with injuries and something to watch coming into game day. I think Gallaudet will be out. I think Tony will go, but I'm not sure where he's at. A lot of injury issues, obviously. And the name, obviously, not on that list was Daniel Jones. So he will be good to go. The Packers did get big news today. Super exciting. They got Jair Alexander back. I was saying that I did not think they would need him. I did not think if they... If he wasn't 100% full, ready, he thought so, staff thought so. I didn't think they'd put him in or, or have him go, you know, play. So I thought just because the Giants don't throw the ball much, Daniel Jones is hurt, you know, if Davis Webb comes in, they're not, you know, they're going to run the ball out with Saquon. And Jair, you know, obviously we want him on the field, but if he's not ready, we're not going to force him. We're not going to push him into doing it early. And so... Having him back, though, that's big news. The fact that he's full healthy and ready to rock, that's so good. Um, obviously, it's going to just make this Packers defense that much better to have him out there. Keyshawn Nixon played great in his absence, but Jair will play, and that's super exciting news. However, Adrian Amos, we all saw him go out in the first quarter against the Patriots after tackling one of the Patriots, I think, running backs. He did go out with a concussion. He had a concussion protocol all week. He is questionable for the game on Sunday. We will watch that closely. Amos would be a big loss for this game because Saquon's a running back that's going to get into the second level fairly quickly on some of those runs. So you need a guy that can come down in the box and make sure tackles, and that's what Amos does. He did that against Leonard Fournette a lot, another big back, and he was coming down and making stops. So having Amos out there would be huge, and hopefully he is good to go. Obviously, he got the concussion last week. This game is a little bit earlier in the day, so maybe that'll set him back. But it's still, obviously, a week long, and hopefully he's good to go. It didn't look like a super severe, crazy hit, but I know the league and the Packers and everybody are just being super cautious because of the Tua situation and then because of what happened to Naheem Hines last night. So something to watch for. But also, Packers' Tyreek Carpenter, he's out with abs. He might play. He's you know questionable. And then uh, Devontae Wyatt with his quad. He's questionable as well. So Packers really, really doing well this year. Knocking on wood again to get through this season unscathed health-wise. Obviously, there's going to be injuries. Sammy Watkins is on IR right now. Chris Barnes is on IR. But so far, not met with the injury bug. And the Packers look like they are the healthier team going into Sunday, which is super exciting. So like I said, Daniel Jones is good to go. He does have that sore ankle, so it's going to make it tough for him to run a lot. It's going to make him tough to get back on that leg and throw it. It's going to be just awkward for him to play in general. They're going to numb it up. He's not going to have a lot of feeling in his legs, so it's going to be difficult. Obviously, the adrenaline will get going. He's in London. He's going to want to make plays, but if the Packers get to him early, maybe hit him a few times, maybe they'll shake up that ankle, and they're going to be forced to go to Davis Webb. Not sure, but Webb has not... He's a six-year vet, and he has not yet completed or attempted a pass in the regular season in the NFL. So he's a guy that if he came in, it would be like a Bailey Zappi situation last week, but a guy that had a little more experience. So we will see. Hopefully the Packers can get after Daniel Jones either way and stop this run game. But Barkley, like I said, has 462 yards through week four. He just broke Tiki Barber's 2004 record of two um, of 455 yards. That was, like I said, that happened in 2004. So through the first four games, which is a huge feat for, 
you know, a running back, especially Barkley coming back after all the injuries he's sustained the last couple of years. But Packers did stop the Buccaneers for 34 yards rushing. What was that week two or week three? So week three, they stopped the Buccaneers for 34 yards rushing. But the other games combined, the Vikings game, the Bears game, and the Patriots game, they've given up 126.8 yards on the ground. But 180 of those yard, I mean, 180 of that average was against the Bears during the Bears game when the Packers were leading and they were letting the Bears just run the ball if they wanted to. And it wasn't really a threat to, to you know, really get after the lead or, or a threat to score a lot of points. So they kept everything in front of them and kind of let them run the ball. So they did have some success on the ground, but none of that materialized into much points. And the Packers were able to make a goal line stand. And that was it for that. So the numbers are a little bit skewed, but still, that is a lot of yards on the ground, especially going up against Saquon Barkley, a guy who has been super productive this season running the football. So, But like I said, the Patriots last week, 152 yards on the ground between Harris and Stevenson. So with Saquon and Jones, we're going to really have to be stout in our run keys and with our tackling, something that has kind of been an issue for the Packers earlier in this season. But, you know... You know, the Packers just, they got to stay sound. They t tackle, like I said, that's why Adrian Amos is going to be such a big part of this. If he can play, that'll be so huge for the Packers. And speaking of safeties, Giants just re-signed to their practice squad Landon Collins, a guy who has been through the NFL for a few years now. You know, I think he's almost a 10-year vet at this point. He's been in the league for a long time. He's played around different teams. I think he was on the the, uh, the Commanders before they were the Commanders, and then the Giants, obviously, uh, when he got drafted. So he's back on the practice squad. Not a guy that we're going to have to be worried about or concerned about. He's kind of at the end of his career, but is a guy that they brought in. Maybe we'll see him. Maybe they won't. They do have a lot of injuries on the back end at safety and at corner, so maybe that's just the guy brought in just in case. But So enough about what the Giants do good. Uh, the Packers are what we're going to be excited about watching. The Packers are who we want to see. And Aaron Rodgers and his weapons are what is going to make this Packers team win this game. Obviously, the defense is going to do its job. We know they're going to be able to get after Daniel Jones. We know that Daniel Jones struggles with accuracy and throwing it downfield. And we know that some of these receivers aren't the playmakers that other teams have. So Packers back end should be able to cover these guys. And the pressure should be able to get to Daniel Jones you know, Evan Neal at, at left tackle, he's going to really be hard for Preston Smith or Gary to get get past and get to Daniel Jones. So they're going to have to flip-flop sides maybe and make it easier for one of the guys and kind of just, you know, try to keep Evan Neal from dominating that left side. So, but anyway, so Romeo Dobbs, as Aaron Rodgers' kind of second target now, has 13 catches with 120 yards and two touchdowns in the last two games. He has 19 catches with 184 yards on the season, while Lazard has 12 catches for 174 yards and two touchdowns. Both these guys, in his three games back only, so both these guys have been really productive for Rodgers. He's really spreading the ball around 19 catches, like I said, for Dobbs. 12 for Lazard, and then Robert Tanyan comes in with 13 catches for 106 yards in the score. He's really getting the ball around to these guys. Sammy Watkins had some of those catches earlier in the season, and and Cobb's been making these big-time third-down catches. Doesn't have a lot, maybe two or three grabs a game, but they seem to be huge momentum swings and huge plays for this offense to really keep this Packers, the Packers drives alive. So really exciting to see. All these guys kind of coming along. Lazard, another week away from the ankle injury. Tanyan, another week away from just, you know, having the mental security that that knee is going to hold up. You know, it's so hard at first for these guys to really trust the knee after an ACL tear and coming back, and especially a bigger guy like Tanyan, a tight end. So awesome to see him kind of um, pr continue to progress. And then Lazard as well. And then Dobbs, obviously the man of the hour. Watch my other video on Dobbs on why I think he can break some of these records that are coming up here in the reception category. But I look for Dobbs to really stand out as kind of that wide receiver one, two with with um, Lazard. They both have the talent. They both have a different skill set. But Dobbs is just really shifty. He's kind of just a, a guy that you can just get the ball too quick and he can make you a play. Lazard's a little bit bigger, not as shifty. He does have some wiggle to him, but not the same as Dobbs. We all see it. We all saw it. We get it. Um, 
But see, this is what it's really going to come down to. The Giants are going to want to run the ball. They're going to want to control the clock. They're going to want to get Saquon involved. They're going to want to keep Daniel Jones upright and not take a lot of hits, obviously, with the ankle. So they're going to be doing a lot of quick passes. They're going to be a lot of, doing a lot of just quick handoffs and, and things of that nature. So Packers need to be stout on defense, of course. They need to keep everything in front of them and make tackles. But when they do have the ball on offense, they also need to be able to maintain some clock, run the ball, and keep the Giants' offense off the field so that their defense can have a rest. If they just, you know, keep punting back and forth, the defense is really going to wear out trying to chase Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley around a lot. So Jones and Dylan are going to be huge in this game for the Packers. Coming off last week, you know, it wasn't a great week running the ball. Um, well, I guess they had 183. Against the, the week before against the Buccaneers wasn't great, but last week was pretty good against the Patriots. 183 yards on the ground, 199 total yards for Jones and Dillon. So they need to just repeat that, exactly. So um, they really did have a great day on the ground. I, I was thinking about the other game before that where they struggled a little bit. But all in all, Tampa Bay's defense is a beast, and that's why they struggled. Otherwise, you know, the Vikings, they struggled. The Bears, obviously, they ran all over. Last week, they um, also ran all over after a week off, uh, after getting kind of stopped on against Tampa Bay. But So Jones and Dylan. Dylan has more carries at 57 carries, but he only has 211 yards. That's 3.7 yards per carry. Jones, on the other hand, has 48 carries, which is about 9 carries less than Dylan. And he has 327 yards, which is a 6.8 yard average. And they combined for about 21 catches and 150 yards receiving, which is huge for your running backs, especially, you know, Jones is so shifty and can make so many dynamic plays out of the backfield. But getting the ball to Dylan out in space, he is just so big, so strong, so hard to tackle. And these cornerbacks, I mean, Dylan's like six foot, 250, and these cornerbacks are 5'8", 5'9", 5'10", about 175, 185. So they're not trying to come flying in and make uh, make a tackle on Dylan. So really need to get him out in the flats and try to get him more pass receptions. But all in all, these two running backs, I mean, a 6.8 average for Jones, and they have 327 yards. I mean, this guy is so dynamic. He really looks like the best player on the field, game in and game out. Last week, like I said, 183 yards. Jones had 110 on, I think, like 16 carries, and Dylan had like 73 on 17 carries. So Dylan even had more carries and about, you know, two-thirds of the yards. So Jones really just is dynamic, and obviously some of these play calls are just to ram up the middle and gain a few yards, kind of grind it out. That's what you kind of do, and then you give it to uh, Jones on like a little scat back toss, and everybody's kind of pinching down in the center, and you toss it to him on the outside, and he's you know ten yards downfield. So both of their skill sets are huge for the Packers. Both of them really get utilized well in Lafleur's offense, and I'm just excited to see what these guys do on Sunday. All of them, Dobbs, Lazard, Tanyan, and the two running backs, Dylan and Jones. But really comes down to defense. Can the defense stop the Giants like they have been all season against most, most of these teams like they did against Tampa Bay and Tom Brady like they you know were able to do against Chicago, stop them at the goal line, and then last week in you know Tampa Bay at the goal line on the two-point conversion, and then like, like last week in overtime when the Patriots had the ball at the 50. I mean, that's just three weeks in a row where it's crazy nonsense with the defense being put in positions where they have to make plays. I mean, obviously the Packers had a bit of a lead against the Bears, but if the Bears would have scored, it would have made the game a lot different at that point. And then obviously Tampa Bay, no touchdowns all game. Tom Brady leads a fourth quarter touchdown drive and they score, but they're down eight. So they have to go for two and the defense holds because of a delay game call, which, you know, crazy. You can't keep winning like that. And then last week, going into overtime, after throwing a pick six before half, and then going back and forth with a rookie fourth-round pick, and then going into overtime, getting the ball first, not doing anything with it, and then punting it, and having them get the ball at that 50-yard line, and then having to stop them, and then try to get, and then getting the ball at the 10 and having to drive all the length of the field to get in field goal range and kicking, I think it was a 32-yarder to win the game. So just all in all crazy for the Packers defense, which is why this is not a sustainable way to win, and that's what Rodgers had said already. But Rashawn Gary has five sacks in four games. He's on pace for 21 sacks, which would be just under the NFL record that T.J. Watt, 
I think tied last year at 22 and a half with Michael Strahan. So just crazy. And you know, if he got to 21, why you could he's you know he could get there, get some multi sack games like he did last week where he got two and. He's knocking on the door as long as he keeps that pace of one a game at least and then adds some multi-sack games. Against Daniel Jones, a running quarterback, a guy that has an ankle injury, he might be able to get after him more than once, more than twice. But if Davis Mills or Webb, Davis Webb comes in, not Davis Mills, Davis Webb, if he comes in, he might be a guy that the Packers get after a lot. If they're down points, you know, they're not going to be able to run the ball as much. If the Packers can jump out to an early lead, that's the huge, you know, momentum swing there is that the Packers can get out to an early lead, take away some of that ground game from the Giants, the Saquon Barkley runs and everything. Then it puts a lot more pressure on uh, Daniel Jones to throw the ball, which we know he's just not super efficient at yet. So um, obviously QB spy him so he doesn't get a big chunk play in the on, on the ground. But all in all, I think the Packers defense can keep him contained. Like I said, Gary on the outside. Preston Smith has two and a half sacks this year. Kenny Clark in the middle, pushing pushing the middle up, putting pressure on the middle, uh, forcing the quarterback to step back further instead of stepping up in the pocket. And then that's when he gets met by the two edge rushers coming around the outside. And we keep seeing Rashawn Gary keep doing this deeper and deeper rush where he kind of just goes way outside and the tackle can't keep up. So then he swings around, and that's how we got to Zappi last week with that forced fumble sack, fumble recovery. So, But then we have Reed, who got a sack last week, and Lowry, who finally got in the sack category with a half a sack. He split with Preston Smith. So Packers defense should be able to get after the Giants offense. Like I said, on the back end, they should be able to cover those receivers. Richie James is the Giants' leading receiver. You know, he was the 49ers' like number three receiver last year, maybe number four last year. So he's a guy that... You know, he's a player, he can make plays, but a guy that if you put Stokes, Douglas, or Jair on him, they should be able to lock him up or at least, you know, prevent him from making a lot of big plays. Same with the rest of the receivers. Kenny Galladay was their big signing, their big money guy, and he just hasn't done anything for them. Sterling Shepard's out for the year, and Darius Slayton is, you know, dealing with injuries, hobbled a little bit, but he should be playing in the game. So, a lot to take in there. Packers, Giants from London. It'll be 8.30 Central Time in Wisconsin, but that's like 9.30 on the East Coast, and then 2.30 in London. The weather's supposed to be beautiful. It's supposed to be about 63 degrees with a high at kickoff, sunny, and so everybody in London, all the people in the stands, all the fans, Packer fans, players, coaches, everybody is going to have a great experience. Just hopefully we can get out of there with a W and come back to Green Bay next week against the Jets as 4-1 uh, and one and leaders of the division, hopefully, if the Vikings do lose. But all in all, Packers should, I mean, they're favored by 9.5 again, so they should be able to pull this victory out. Obviously, the last two weeks haven't been the way Packers normally win by blowing teams out, by scoring so many points. It's been a defensive struggle, so... We'll see how it goes, but I'm super excited. I do think the Packers win. It'll be about, um, you know, offensive struggle at first, I think. I think they're going to both want to try to run the ball a lot, and that's going to put them into some deep third down and longs. And hopefully the Packers can start trusting their young receivers early, getting the ball to Watson and Dobbs, and then just, you know, be efficient on offense. You really just got to keep drives alive and score points, take the points, when you're in range, treat this like an away game so that anytime you're in range for points, you just take them. That's what I would do. Um, when you're at home, you have a little bit of an advantage, so you don't always have to take the points. But whenever you're on the road or in a hostile environment of any kind, this might be more of a home game for the Packers, though the fans are going to be super pro Packer. I think they're going to be more Packer fans than Giants fans. But the Giants is New York, and New York has a huge, broad, you know, fan base and they touch people all over the world so Giants will come out a lot more than people probably think or the Giants fans will so it could be a hostile environment it could not be but the Packers just need to be prepared for all that just like I said if you do get in field goal range or something just take the points don't try to force it don't try to push it I think like last week the Patriots are gonna or Patriots struggled to score points early on and then they kind of went back and forth but 
I think that the Giants are going to struggle to score points against the Packers, and it's just going to kind of be a real defensive game. But if the Packers can make some plays, make some big plays, hit Christian Watson for a 75-yarder, I think that would be the game-breaker, and then the defense can hold because Daniel Jones is just not a prolific passer. I don't think he's going to be able to really slice and dice this Packers defense with accuracy and throwing the ball over the yard. He only had 13 passes last week in their win against the Bears. So Packers get out to a lead. They're going to force them to throw it a lot more. And then I think that puts them in a difficult position. They're not really prepared to win like that. They're kind of prepared to win by defense and grinding out the game. But Packers jump on them early, score some points, and put them in a little bit of a difficult position, one they're not comfortable with. In and the Packers should get the W. So I'm thinking it'll be about 27 to 14. Packers win by 13 points, 27 14. That's my official Packers Giants in London prediction. Go Packers. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to watch other videos, Romeo Dobbs and everything Packers. Thank you guys again for watching. Peace out. Go Pack Go. Let's go get them.